Hello everyone. My name is Mark Fennell, at least in this lifetime. And today I'm going to talk to you about general proof of the spiritual world. That the metaphysical world actually exists. Now, some of you already know that it exists. And you can watch this video and hear my stories of of proof. But there are many people, actually a lot of scientists, mainstream scientists, not advanced scientists, mainstream scientists, who are often very critical, who think that the metaphysical world doesn't exist, there's no such thing as psychic phenomenon, it's all imagination, delusion, whatever else, right? I am one of those people that has a lot of contact with the spiritual world. More than I can tell you. I'm going to give you, I give you some proof and I write certain journals, but I tell you what, there's a lot more that I could never say that stays only in my journals. Right? A lot more. So there's, I've had a lot of my of communications experiences. And this is mainly for those people who say, I don't believe it. It's all hokum. It doesn't exist. You know, only what exists is what I can see in front of me. You can't prove it. Where's the photo? These sorts of things. So this is mainly directed towards them, but I would like everyone else to watch it as well. And the main reason for believing in the metaphysical world, I'm not saying the reason it exists, but the reason why it's important to know that it exists is because of the marvelous things you can do with it. It's like having a university that you can go into and look in all the rooms. It's like having professors that you can talk to. It's like having free life coaches to help you with your life. It's like a university, a library, a, a theater. There, there's so many things that it could be like that you can use it for. And believe me, I've I've used it. I've used it a lot to get where, to get my uh, discoveries. Of course, there's always observations, but I've used it a lot. And speaking of observations, I will remind you that in this lifetime I was a scientist first. Although I had spiritual experiences and didn't recognize it as such, through early on, my training was as a scientist totally as a scientist. I worked as a manufacturing engineer, very hands-on, right? Graduate school, chemistry, physics, right? Lab reports, observations, experiments, data sets, manufacturing engineer, what you can touch, make it work, quality control, right? You skeptics, keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. So what are some of the general ways that you know that the spiritual world can exist? Well, one is the foreign language. I have had many spiritual friends who talk to me in a foreign language. German, it's very common. I have a lot of German friends, a few from Russia and the Ukraine, a few from France. And they'll speak to me in their language. And I don't know what the word means, so I have to go look it up. All right, so you would not be making up your own words that you don't understand. That That's not how your mind would work if this were fiction. Okay. Latin is one of my favorites because I have had several people who visited me who lived in the times of ancient Rome. Yeah, from about, you know, 100 AD. You know, 200 BC, 100 AD, 400 AD, uh, you know, those ranges. And, uh, yeah, they speak in Latin. So I've heard actual Latin spoke by the actual people 
who lived during that time. Okay, And that's one of the ways you can tell. Because do I know a thing about Latin? Not until these guys came by. I've learned along the way. but So foreign language is one of them. Your mind's not going to create foreign language, especially not words you've ever heard of. All right? So. And I, I love it. I, I love them speaking in the foreign language, especially the Latin ones. Because most of them who've come to me who've come from the uh, Roman Empire have been big people. Like the uh, several Roman emperors have come down and talked to me. So, yeah. All right, so foreign language, that's one. What's another one? Playing with your radio. Spirit world is able to work with your electronics very well. It's one of the easiest things for them to do. So the radio, uh, particularly the CD player. I have a couple different CD players. Now one CD player I have, it's, it's broken now, but the, um, for many years, they were able to use the CD player to stop and pause at certain points. This would only happen on specific songs, and they would stop on specific words. All right? I just called to say I love you. They paused on that one, on the word love. Love, 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 love. I just called to say I love you, and they pause on the word love. Check. Carry on my wayward son. They paused on the word son. Son, 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 son. Meaning me. A couple times they've done it on uh, Spirits Having Flown by the Bee Gees. And what's interesting, you look at the words of the whole song versus the words that my spirits actually stopped on. Don't occur that often. So they stopped on the words spirits, flown, and through. Okay? Spirits, flown, through. Those are the words they stopped on. Spirits, then jump to flown, through. And if you listen to the song, those words don't happen that often, nor do they happen in that order. They weren't written in that, that order, either. So, at least not exactly. So, those, that's one way you can tell. You know, they play with the radio, they play with the, uh, the CD, the CD player, easy to work. Similar with the television, okay? I've had spirit guides turn the television on and off and change channels. And the thing is, when they change channels, they'll change to a documentary program based on something that I am currently working with or something that I have worked with a few months ago. So you want to tell me the television just randomly turned on or I'm watching TV and it randomly, randomly changed channels all by itself to a program that is on a topic that I'm interested in? There are at least two times that I know that was very, very specific. I think there might have been more, but there were two ones that are, were very, very specific to things that I'd actually been working on. Mm -hmm. Another time is I'm working on my novel and TV turned on. The TV remote was nowhere in sight. I mean, it was far away. It couldn't, wasn't jumped on or anything. So I turned it off. Turned back on again. So I turned it off. And as soon as I left the room, turned back on again. So that is a sign of the a spirit friend who's there. Okay? It's electronics. Gifts. 
Gifts are another way that they can tell. One time there was a feather that I found in a bush. Now I'll explain this. I have been working at this particular place. I love it. It was the, the DRC Scoring Center. It was actually a place where I got many physical, metaphysical visits during there over, over those years. So I've been working there. You know, I work there every day during it's seasonal work, but every day for like three months at a time for a few years. Always walked around, so I knew the area very well. And this particular time, there was a, a large feather standing straight up in a bush. Just, I've never seen a feather straight up before. It was also a feather of I've never seen before. I've walked that parking lot many times. Never seen a feather like it. Hadn't seen one before. Hadn't seen one since. Hadn't seen a feather stick up in a bush before. And I looked for another feather to stick up. Hadn't seen one since. Just that one time. There was also a time when I was uh, told to go take a walk and to turn right. And when I turned right, there was an object. I'm not going to say what the subject is, but it was clearly placed by metaphysical friends. And now it's, you know, it's kept in a space, uh, special place. So these are, these are ways you can tell that it's, that it's real. They're really there. It's always good if you have confirmation with another person. Now this is difficult because spirit world tends to only communicate with the one person. Sometimes they'll do it more at once. Multiple people at the same time, but... I don't know if it's because of the frequency to get into your brain, or I think it's more likely they just want to communicate with one person at a time, is why they do that. So it's very difficult to get corroborating evidence for the entire thing. So what I'm going to do instead is talk about people who have gotten similar images or similar words into their brain not knowing that you're getting the same thing All right so for example a couple years ago I took a trip to Germany on the way back from Germany on a plane I kept thinking of the word or the name marigold 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 and it wasn't coming in the middle of the brain it was coming from like some back of the brain marigold now this was December-ish, like I think December 10th or something when, when I was flying back. Now flashed to New Year's Eve, which was you know, like two weeks, three weeks later. And I was sitting with a person and the person says, do you know what a marigold is? I said, yes. Because I think I keep smelling marigold. You can't make that stuff up, all right? This person had no idea of the previous marigold message I had gotten on the plane three weeks earlier. All right, so you can't can't do that. Another time I was taking a massage. I go to this massage person somewhat regularly. Uh, she's no longer with the place. I got somebody else and said because she uh, she moved. But she, we've been together for uh, several months as my massage therapist. You know, she sticks in a radio player, some nice relaxing music, and so on. And her, one time her radio, the music uh, starts buzzing loudly. It's like, err, err. And, and it gets, it's, it's interrupted, and the, the, the song is staticky, and it's, ugh. and she says, what's going on with that thing? That usually, I've never had that. And then she added, unless I'm getting a message from someone. Now, of course, she meant like a phone call or text message. But I'm thinking, of course, spiritual message. The way she said it could have applied to all. She might have been actually prompted to say that. 
But in any case, there was actual buzzing. It's not happened to her phone before, unless she gets a message. So that's a confirmation. It's nice to have the confirmation. Um, yeah, and back to the buzzing. The uh, the radio will often buzz. You know, it's the spirit being near me, right? Um, physical objects. Physical objects are sometimes moved to get your attention. There's one particular object that's on my desk. It is impossible to bump it off. I, I tried everything to bump it off. You know, when I put it back on the desk, I tried pushing the table, and I tried rubbing against it, and I even tried shaking the table. You couldn't, you couldn't move it. The only way to move this object was actually physically pick it up and drop it on the floor. There was just no other way. Even with me shaking the table, I couldn't, couldn't do it. Um, another one that dropped off was a uh, candles, which were on a top shelf and the candles fell off directly in front of me. Just pew. I put them back on the shelf. They, they, they wouldn't fall off. I mean, I, I again, it's a built-in cabinet, so I tried shaking it in different ways. Couldn't shake it off. So, again, those kinds of things are clearly somebody else. They're not, you know, they're not the the I bumped the desk earlier and now just kind of sliding off. No. Yeah. And believe me, I've done those tests. I do those tests every time like a good scientist. To see. Right? So as a good scientist will say, can it be recreated by natural means? No. Or like with a feather, you know, have you seen it before? Have you seen it again? In a period of months, no. So th these kind of things, those are those are good ways to tell. Those are good physical, physical things. Confirmation of messages. Sometimes there are visions, or they'll, they'll show you something, and. You know, it's either random something or um, a specific something they want to show you. That, uh, okay, you're ready to know about this. Very few people are, but you can know about this. And then I do my Google research, and voila. The item may not be there, because maybe it's still kind of a secret. Maybe the metaphysical world still wants you to keep it a secret. But there's enough information in the internet and archaeology and whatnot that you can confirm that corroborate that yeah it's it's there I'll be given a word oftentimes or a place you know that I had no idea existed you know like a group of pyramids in Africa that are I think the Sudan I don't I don't really remember anymore but anyway, I was, I was told to look it up, and uh, there it was. Bless her known, but there it is. I had no idea. Or a vision of a, a cat. And the very next day, I did substitute teaching, and the picture on the uh, cabinet, there were two cats. One of them was the exact cat that I saw in my vision. So... Again, this is this is spiritual world confirmation. These are confirmation things. So for all of you people who are purely scientists and purely rationalists, you gotta open up your mind more. Alright? Because there's plenty of evidence to point to metaphysical worlds, to spiritual friends hanging out with us trying to talk to us, trying to be with us. You just have to listen. I mean, you just have to keep your eyes open and listen and watch. 
and believe. And I'm not saying believe in, believing is a hard word, you know, believe in something you can't see, well, but then you can see it. It's belief with verification. Believe that it's possible, kind of like a theory, then watch the evidence unfold, the theory will be proven, and now it's no longer just a belief, it is a conclusion. So everyone look at it that way, for you scientific people. I have so much evidence now, so many experience, it is way past the foregone conclusion. I mean, it is, it is an absolute, undisputable fact that the metaphysical world exists, that there are spiritual beings. And beyond that, there is proof of things that I can't tell you because you're not ready to know. Things that are only in my journals. So 100 years from now, researchers can learn the truths of the metaphysical world, which I can't present to you. But even those are true, and those evidence for those things, but I can't tell you. You gotta wait 100 years, look at my journals, then learn. But before you get to my journals, you're gonna have to go to baby steps, right? You're gonna have to know that the metaphysical world exists. You're gonna have to see it for yourself, start feeling it for yourself, start believing it for yourself, okay? I want it to be a foregone absolute conclusion for everybody on this earth to say, yes, the spiritual world exists. We may differ on our understanding of it, differ on our perceptions of it, but yes, metaphysical world exists. Yes, there are multiple realms. Yes, our soul lives forever. Yes, there are spiritual friends who come to hang out with us from time to time. These are indisputable facts. For anybody who's willing to look, listen, hear, overwhelming evidence. Overwhelming evidence for many of us, all right? So if you're not there yet, if your receivers are not there for yourself, trust the rest of us. Believe that the rest of us know. Which reminds me to a point I often bring up. To those who don't believe in the spiritual world, it's like having, not having senses. Suppose that you're the one who is blind. And we're trying to talk to you about colors. And all the little things we see, all the different types of trees and the grass and you know, the colors on our DVD boxes and television and everything else. But you can't see. You were born blind. So that doesn't mean much to you. But just because you're blind, do not deny the fact that many of us can see. Okay? Just because you're blind, do not deny the reality that many of us can see. And the same thing goes with the metaphysical world. Some of us have better senses than others. Some of us have learned to develop these sensing better than others. Okay? At this time, I'm really good. Um, communication with the spiritual world is mostly psychic. And that's difficult to prove for you. Yeah, well, let's set that aside for a moment. I hear audible, so I do hear a lot. I often see. Okay? And, of course, there's the physical evidence that I pointed out earlier. Psychic is a lot of it. It's easiest to communicate psychically, and they do. Right? Astral travel is also real. I've astrally traveled to other parts of the world, and I've also, also been escorted to different realms beyond the earthly realm. So I know those places exist, because I've been there. 
I've been there. I've seen it. All right. A couple times, you know, I was been there so long that I started to get a little nervous because you know I've been here a long time. I don't know how my body's connected and maybe like to send me back. And they usually do. You know, a couple of times I said, "Stay here. We'll send you back when we're ready." I'm like, okay. What realm I was at, you know, some people said, you're not supposed to be here. It's like, well, I wasn't the one who brought me here. Somebody else escorted me here. Don't tell me I'm not supposed to be here. Tell whoever escorted me. <laughs> so, you know, these places exist. Um, it's not like I want to go there anytime soon. I mean, I like visiting there, but I don't want to leave this earth right now and live there. But I'm telling you, they do exist. Because I've seen it and felt it and talked to people there, so. Do I have physical evidence? No, I don't. It's not the way it works. But for those of you who do experience it, you know it's real. And for those of you who are skeptics, you're just going to have to trust us that we know what we're talking about. Because we have seen and have experienced it and we know it's real. That's all I can say about that, really. Okay, so I'm just going to conclude with this. I really want it to be a foregone conclusion, a baseline for everybody on earth to know that the metaphysical world is real, it does exist. That there are spiritual beings around us. Most of them are humans, just like us. And they want to be our friends, hang out, help us out. You know, you know heck, you know, most humans you know they're good humans or bad humans so they're good human spirits and bad human spirits you know, just peoples right but they do they are, they are there they do exist and they are hanging out and you can try to invite them into your home if you want sometimes they'll just come and help you out if they feel you really need it so i want a foregone conclusion absolutely known to everybody that the spiritual world does exist metaphysical realms do exist they are here to help us, angels and, and spirit guides and everybody else. There's physical evidence if you want to look for it, if you're paying attention. And uh, this is coming from someone who is a scientist, engineer. Yeah. So. so no more skeptics. No more skeptics. No more of this. It doesn't resist... It's in your imagination. It's delusional thinking. No, no, no. No more of that. Let's let's just get rid of that right now. Well, as certainly as you have two hands, as certainly as your chair supports you, the metaphysical world exists. That's just a given. Now work with it. Start from that point, acknowledge the reality, and then start working with it. That's my message for today.